global economy is gathering steam, but it remains slow and unsteady. Former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Sir John Major, is here to provide his views on the path ahead. Sir John, Europe has finally emerged from recession, Japan is growing after two years of stagnation and the US is trudging ahead. How would you describe the current state of health of the global economy? Well, I think it's uh, certainly in recovery. I don't think there's very much doubt about that. But I think in many of the economies, there's some way to go before we return to the status quo before the financial crisis in 2007. So it's a good deal better than it was 12 months ago. I suspect it will continue to improve over the next 12 months or so, perhaps faster than we ima may imagine in many parts of the world. How do you think the global economy will develop in 2014 then? Will certain countries stand out? Well, I think the United States will recover a good deal more swiftly than many people imagine. They have their problems and they have, of course, a huge uh, debt position. But the trajectory of bringing debt down is very attractive now. They're becoming more and more self-sufficient in energy, which will add to internal confidence and, and animal spirits in the United States. So I expect they will uh, grow quite rapidly. I think the United Kingdom might outperform current people's expectations. We shall see. But traditionally, they have swung further and faster into recession or further and faster into growth than most forecasts have indicated. I think that may happen again. China at 7.5% will still be very significant. So I think we are going to see areas where some countries will grow faster than anticipated. But we're not looking at a boom scenario at all. We're looking at a growing recovery. And I think if it does grow steadily, that may be healthier in the medium term than a very rapid and sharp return artificially stimulated. When will we see the improvement of growth actually start resolving some of the world's major economic problems like high unemployment in Europe and heavy government debts in Europe and Japan? Well, I think that's going to take some years. I mean, with any fruits of growth, there's partly dealing with the debt problem, which is expensive and diminishes the money available for growth, and there's partly the expense of growth-related policies. So I think it is going to be quite a while before we return to where we were before. This recent financial crisis and the recession that followed it has been almost unprecedented in scale. We haven't had anything quite like this to deal with for a very, very long time. And of course, policy has been cautious, and it's going to be some time before we return to the healthy state of the world economy uh, to which we are now heading, but it's still some way ahead. Are there certain obstacles that risk knocking back the pace of growth? Well, there are always uncertainties in the, uh, in the world. If there is another banking collapse, for example, that is unexpected and large, that would clearly have a very significant effect. If there's a problem in this, a dash to lower the exchange rate of currencies amongst so many countries, that could certainly conceivably create a currency problem. There's always the familiar problems of is there going to be trouble in one part of the world or another, most obviously the Middle East that could create problems. But there's nothing one can foresee that looks substantial, that looks as though it's really likely to derail what is a steady recovery. We're hearing a lot about the slowdown in emerging markets. At 7.5% growth in China is actually still explosive by the standards of developed countries. This may be painful in the short term, but is this a healthy development in the long term? I think it's healthy that uh, China are looking at a more sustainable growth pattern at the present time and for the future. And also, of course, China, for a raft of uh, different reasons, have decided to expand domestic demand within China with wage increases averaging about 13% a year, presumably for the next few years. And that will both create a bigger internal market within China and a much bigger market for the rest of the world to aim at. So I think that is, uh, for the world economy, a very benevolent development. Looking back on the past few decades then, how would you compare the world now? Are we in a safer place? I think in terms of military matters, yes, we are in a safer place. It's very fashionable these days to be very gloomy. You can be very wise if you're gloomy. But I think there are some very optimistic things emerging. One of them is, as the global economy intertwines, as we become more and more dependent upon one another, as America, China and the European Union begin to have increasingly common interests in what happens around the world, the chance of conflict is much less than it was. The relationship, for example, between the two biggest powers, America and China, is infinitely better today than was the relationship between the two dominant powers, America and the Soviet Union, 30 years ago. So we may have small wars, 
we may have terrorism, we may have economic problems, we will have uncertainties, but we don't have that risk that existed for so long of a serious intercontinental conflict. That, I think, is becoming less likely every single year, and I think that is a very attractive development, side effect of the way the world economy has made us more dependent one upon another. Thank you very much, Sir John. Thank you. For more information on market movements and global trends, check out news and expertise on the Credit Suisse website.